Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Charles. Today we have a new story to start. This one is much shorter, it's a two-part tale, but it's still an interesting story, and it's my favorite kind of story, one that we haven't had in quite some time, an origin tale. A story that tells the why of why we think something. And these are just fascinating stories. So today, without any further ado, this is Why the Sea is Salt. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there were two brothers, the one rich and the other poor. When Christmas Eve came, the poor one had not a bite in the house, either of meat or bread, so he went to his brother and begged him in God's name to give him something for Christmas Day. It was by no means the first time that the brother had been forced to give something to him, and he was not better pleased at being asked now than he generally was. "'If you'll do what I ask you, you shall have a whole ham,' said he. The poor one immediately thanked him and promised this. "'Well,' Here is the ham, and now you must go straight to Dead Man's Hall, said the rich brother, throwing the ham to him. Well, I will do as I have promised, said the other, and he took the ham and set off. He went on and on for the live-long day, and at nightfall he came to a place where there was a bright light. I have no doubt this is the place, thought the man with the ham. An old man with a long white beard was standing in the outhouse chopping yule logs. "'Good evening,' said the man with the ham. "'Good evening to you. Where are you going at this late hour?' said the man. "'I'm going to Dead Man's Hall, if only I am in the right track,' answered the poor man. "'Oh, yes, you are right enough, for it is here,' said the old man. "'But when you get inside, they will all want to buy your ham, for they don't get much meat to eat there. But you must not sell it unless you can get the hand mill which stands behind the door for it. When you come out again, I will teach you how to stop the hand mill, which is useful for almost everything. So the man with the ham thanked the other for his good advice and rapped at the door. When he got in, everything happened just as the old man had said it would. All the people, great and small, came round him like ants on an anthill, and each tried to outbid the other for the ham. By rights, my old woman and I ought to have it for our Christmas dinner, but since you have set your hearts upon it, I must give it up to you said the man. But if I sell, I will have the hand mill, which is standing there, behind the door. At first they would not hear of this, and haggled and bargained with the man, but he stuck to what he had said, and the people were forced to give him the hand mill. When the man came out again into the yard, he asked the old woodcutter how he was to stop the hand mill, and when he learnt that, he thanked him and set off home with all the speed he could but did not get there until after the clock had struck twelve on Christmas Eve. "'Oh, but where in the world have you been?' says the old woman. "'Here I have sat waiting hour after hour, and have not even two sticks to lay across each other under the Christmas porridge pot. "'Oh, I could not have come before. I had something of importance to see about, and a long way to go too. "'But now you shall just see,' said the man." And then he set the hand mill on the table, and bade it first grind light, and then a tablecloth, and then meat and beer, and everything else that was good for a Christmas Eve supper. And the mill ground all that he ordered. Bless me, said the old woman, as one thing after another appeared. And she wanted to know where her husband had got the mill from, but he would not tell her that. Never mind where I got it. You can see that it is a good one, and the water that turns it will never freeze, said the man. So he ground meat and drink and all kinds of good things to last all Christmas tide, and on the third day he invited all his friends to come to a feast. Now, when the rich brother saw all that there was at the banquet and in the house, he was both vexed and angry, for he grudged everything his brother had. On Christmas Eve he was so poor that he came to me and begged for a trifle, for God's sakes, and now he gives a feast as if he were both a count and a king, thought he. But for heaven's sake, tell me where you got your riches from, he said to his brother. And that is the end of part one.
of why the sea is salt. And here we get to meet a pair of brothers who are so different from each other. And yet, we will discover exactly what this magical mill has to do with why the sea is salt on Wednesday. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you'd like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you'd like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you like the podcast and wanted to support it, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject for as little as a dollar a month. You can get early access to the podcast, a just the stories version of each reading, and for all these multi-part tales, a full recording of the entire tale at the end of the telling. Also, you can always head over to wherever you listen and leave a rating and a review. I do appreciate it so much and it helps others find the podcast. As always, thank you so much for listening.